All right, guys. Um, you got Jared Pino Schultz here again, uh, bringing you another episode of the clinic. Uh, this time, I'm actually not going to be doing CS:GO. Going to be doing Counter Strike Source, uh, where my roots are, and uh, what a lot of people have been actually requesting is a map breakdown of DE Inferno. I mean, this is not going to be your. This I don't have any real video editing programs, anything like that. Like I said before, so this is all going to be raw and real time, no edits whatsoever. So, bear with me, if you can, that is. I mean, if you can't, I can understand, but we're going to jump right into it. I just wanted to let you guys know again, like, this is going to be from the competitive perspective, alright? That's a word I've used multiple times in the past, and can't stress it enough. People do not understand how maps actually are when you're just pubbing, or if you're just coming up or anything like that. I want you guys to know, like, we're going to go through some spams, some tricks that you can force your opponents to move around a little bit more, like chess pieces on a board, uh, smokes, flashes, nades, um, boost spots, pick spots, angles of mo majority of times, how to peek a, use a pop flash or something like that, and just how to really utilize uh, certain, like, tactics to actually give you an upper hand. So, we're going to move right over here and squeeze this camera down. Yes, sir. All right. I'll tie back in game. So, as you guys can see, I mean, let me move my frescas. That's right, I got fresca on deck. So, long story short, we're going to grab ourselves an M4, nades, and a diggle. Long story short is, we're going to start with T side, a little bit more. Well, actually, screw that. We're going to start with the uh, with the approach of the other side. Uh, bind monster. <laughs> We're going to start with a CT side, because I swear to God, everybody doesn't know how to play CT side from what I've been hearing. So, my whole thing is, people don't know how to play this site. This is uh, what we call A, even though you see on the radar up here, it says B. We call it 1.6 sites, because, I mean, a lot of people that converted over to Source came from 1.6. And if you're going to be playing CSGO anyways, you're going to be calling this A, because that's what's labeled as radar anyways. So, get used to calling this A, mainly in association with apartment. But well, the other one is B, associated with banana. So, it's pretty uh, simple. Point is, at this site, a lot of people are curious on how to play certain spots. No, don't know how to like hold their areas. So what we're going to do is, we're going to start off with left side of the map, and we're going to work our way to the right. Just because that way you can actually systematically see how you're supposed to be rotating and turn as well. All right. So what you got here is you've got apartments. This is a majority of the ways you can play there's a lot of different ways. All right, keep in mind. I mean, you got so much like real estate to work with. It's not even funny. But your constant, like the common spot, would be like right here at this angle. All right, it's not a terrible angle. It's just a predictable angle. This is the most common position to find somebody. So you might get pre-fired. You might get just naded the crap out of if you're like say behind this wall and you're like just floating right here. People tend to nade right here sometimes. Like they'll be on the end of this hallway, and they'll just uh, they'll be like, all right, they're gonna peek around. They'll be like, all right, nobody here, nobody's in the bedroom. That means they're gonna go straight and then like nade this crap if there's nobody peeking in any way. I mean, it does damage, but that's it. it's only if they have like say put a little pressure and they spotted you. They won't waste their nades uselessly or carelessly because they can use their nade here over here in the pit instead. They could be like, all right, here, let me just nade this right here, do a little bit of damage. That's going to be a tactic they're going to use. So you've got to be careful about where you play exactly, because these spots are the spots they're going to be looking for. So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at this. Uh, you've got multiple ways to just play right here. And uh, sometimes on pistol round, I know an old school player named Griff used to do this. He used to have a nade, and he could just see a sliver right here. So if they come around that corner, you just huck that. And what that does is that nades like anybody who crosses your screen to that great, and especially now in Source, it works even more efficiently and more effectively, is because the fact is anybody who tries to go through this grate, look at this, you get stuck, 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 and so that nade will pop by the time they even get through there. So that's really good to know, alright? So that nade will work, work wonders for you. Other ways to play it, if you're, say, like with a rifle, I am majority of the times you're going to have a rifle here in apartments. It's really good. Just like learn how to play this. Play the play the firefight sometimes. Like uh, one tactic I know uh, Sunman, say for instance from 3D Max, he uses is he'll smoke the end of apartments and he'll walk up and he is just the biggest doucher. He'll walk up and you know, he'll just push out and just get one two frags, just being scary like a no tomorrow. 
right? One reason I like to smoke that off is because what sometimes is you'll see somebody silhouette cross into the doorway or try to cross the boiler, and sometimes the smoke itself will be funky. And when you're smoking this off, the smoke will be funky, and it won't really uh, cl uh, completely smoke off the feet occasionally. So you're able to actually see it as the smoke shifts. You might see somebody silhouette of their feet, so you just aim for the head. Bam, 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 just get free shots. They'll be pissed. They'll think you're cheating. But you know what? You're not. You're just playing the game. All right? So that's good to know. I mean, there's plenty of other steps you could do. I mean, you could play aggressive with a double up in your departments, like your truck side homie. He could come off and say, like, like so whoever's got the better spawn is almost always going to be pushing into this bedroom. And you want to be careful, though. Because what it is is some terrorists, they like to spam from, like, right there, and they shoot right into this. So get here as quickly as possible, but as unnoticed, all right? You don't want to be noticed when you're coming to this apartments. So you're going to be want to be playing in a crossfire scenario. Like, your teammates on the other end of the hallway, mm, sometimes either taking pot shots or sometimes not. But if he's taking pot shots, you've got to be careful. At the higher levels, people tend to think, oh, man, he's trying to keep our attention. That's a dead giveaway. You don't want that sometimes. You want your guy kind of being down there. You kind of be in a little bit of a bait situation. Uh, you, you just want to be careful, mainly aware of the fact that majority of teams on T side will boost boiler, bef uh, boost into the window, all right, and they'll have a player right here watching that. They'll cover his uh, the guy from boiler if he tries to push up and gil kill him. So these two guys, they work together from T stair T apartment stairs, all right. He covers the boiler while this guy comes in and clears out the bedroom for him, all right. Like he'll come in, he'll jump. And he'll come over here and he'll check this out. If there's anybody there, he'll just frag them out. All right, you got to be careful because this can come here. This wall is spammable completely, so it's stuff to be aware of if you're going to be playing an aggressive style setup. So typically, you're not going to be doing that very often, though. All right, I mean, you can't afford to have a guy sticking his ha his uh, hand on top of a frying pan and just right above it, because I mean, most likely his hand is going to get slammed down. You don't want that crap in any way. So you want to be able to just play it kind of solo. Play it by yourself. You can play aggressive. I, there's a very limited amount of locations you can really play or styles you can play as an aggressive player. All right? One way I like to do it sometimes is say like on eco, I'll come like right here. Mainly because I'm not seen. I'm not really seen from any other positions. Free headshot right there with the eagle. Because the guys are going to typically walk in. They don't want to give away their position completely. A majority of T's will actually run all the way up alt middle, but then they'll walk. Because they don't want to give away what part of the map they, they're watching and holding for pushes. Because typically people will just hold back and they'll look for the uh, CT apartment push to push right here. All right? But if you're like right here, you can get a one dig off easy for an eco. Or you can be like here, get one frag, maybe two frags, three frags. You have the high ground, all right? I call it the Skywalker rule. All right, because when Obi Wan Kenobi says it to Anakin in the movies, he's just like, "You're you're a fool, man. I've got the high ground. Don't do it." Yeah, it's similar in that respect because you have a serious advantage because you will hit the head most of the time. All right, it's good stuff. Utilize your advantage. Elevation is a good key. It's what I like to call uh, using the terrain to your advantage. All right, and you can play multiple ways. And you could be playing right here on the balcony itself. Watching this spot, I, mean, I know some people like to get up here, get an awkward angle for people. Um, sometimes people like to come over here, play like right here. What it does is, this puts you off far enough, Whoop. and I fall off. I'm amazing. So what it is, is people like to play like right about here, and it catches you off guard. They can just right here, as anybody who say tries to jump out, goes quick trying to strafe jump out into truck siding, Get your, uh, get your buddy from behind. Use just one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And just get, you get lots of shots right on here. All right? Let me. So that's good for you to have different angles. I mean, you've got any number of positions. Like from right here, you can play really passive. Just waiting for anybody who tries to beeline right into you just to get the first shot off. Because you know they're coming. They're not going to walk out apartments. You're going to hear them running out. So you just get your, hand, your trigger figure ready. All right? Trigger finger ready. All right, you just you've got the advantage. Like you've got such an advantage. You just get one to two. But your only downside is this angle, and you're not able to watch them if they try to strafe jump out a truck or something like that. But one advantage is you can drop down right quick if you get one frag. 
if you're on the edge of that balcony. You can come over here. You can play underneath the truck side. I mean, so you can play underneath the truck. I mean, playing a little defensively. I know some people like to sit like right here, looking straight up, or they look right here and then they look straight up. Because most of the time, players what they'll do is they'll come out here, they'll run out here and they'll check spots, check over here, and then they beeline it over here. And they typically they typically look towards pit before they look down here. All right. So you'll you'll actually sometimes catch them off guard. And some players will just jump out and be crazy. I've seen uh, a few like really good players, like AZK does this. He can go like right here. He can catch the guy underneath the truck, and then he can straight back here and get these shots. I mean, it's risky, but you know what? He's got a good team to back him up when he's making these kind of crazy maneuvers. Um, but what I want to boil down to is, as the apartment player, you have control of the most powerful position on the map. All right, Inferno, Pit. All right, this area is called Pit. This has so much cover, such extremely good angles, especially for the default plant spot for a majority of teams, being right here against this uh, hay bale. So much cover, so, mu so easy to defend after the plant's been done. That's the reason why Pit is so damn powerful, because you can prevent that plant, you can see in the dark spot, you can see truck side, you can see apartments from both sides, different angles. You could be over here. I mean, you can see itself in the boiler if you have, say, like an op. See, you can see a sliver of boiler right there. So you can just be like, bam. All right. I mean, there's different angles completely. All right. You've got that working to your advantage. If you need to, you can just make stuff up. I mean, in terms of flashbangs, some really good ones that I've seen have been uh, some good flashbangs have been like, say, like Huck and Oh, not that one. I've just been like hucking them. Like you could huck one right there. Not again. There you go. I wait till it pops. Because what it's going to do is that's going to bank off here, hit here, and then it lands like right about here and pops. Alright? It ricochets twice. It should blind a majority of the people coming out, especially the guys coming out of apartments. Because you see how, that, how that'll pop right there? Visibility is maximized. They can't get if they don't get off the balcony, they're gonna get blind. So they gotta come out quick. And even if they come out this way, I mean, if they're coming up truck side, which most teams will attack, and a T side crossfire, well, they'll come as one guy's looking towards pit slash truck side and or balcony, while another one's coming over here. All right, the only person that wouldn't be blind is the guy behind the truck. All right, that's just that's just luck right there for him. Everybody else is gonna be screwed though. Alright, so we've got that we've got that working out for us. And uh truck side, I mean crossfire. Say like you uh say you no longer are gonna play it solo or something like that. A different position. I know one one smart play has been like say if you have low graphics, see how the bumper's not there but it still clips. Alright? You're able to visibly see them I mean before they see you. If they don't have the same thing. I mean if they have low graphics, I mean they're gonna see it. But I mean the whole thing is you're able to throw bank flashes Whoops, that was a smoke. Alright, well, the fact is, you can throw flashes off that. What it does is it double banks. It banks off that corner, hits off this hood, and then it pops in the air. Alright? So it's a really solid flashbang. Blunts everybody on truck side trying to assault the site. So what you've got is... You've got a guy who's able to just come right here, has the flashbang primed. Alright, just aim a little underneath. Or not. A little bit further underneath. So, you'll blind them. And I did this flashbang from CSGO. I wonder if it works here, too. Eh, who knows. I, I did that one in CSGO, and it was a sweet, swell little pop flash that not a lot of people would see. So, that's a good one. You could huck a flashbang off this, and then go for the peaks. Then you've also got yourself flashbangs, just simple ones you can throw that one and back away to a different position, everything like that. You're able to just essentially hold off an entire able. You you disable. You're throwing like an EMP into a radio shack when you throw flashbangs like that. All right, it's really it's really swell. I'm pretty sure some people have actually thrown flashbangs underneath. Oh no, they haven't. Uh, sometimes people have thrown flashbangs underneath the truck. And somehow, I am not entirely confident that that works, but who knows? That's not gonna work. But I'm making stuff up as I go. So bear with me. I'm trying to pioneer a little bit of stuff while I'm trying to show you the, the basics. All right, so, I mean, here's another spot some people like to play from truck side. It's a little riskier, but it's, a l it's quite uncommon. 
All right. I it's since it's so risky. I mean, people don't tend to like look right here. So you can sometimes get the first couple frags off. I mean, you can get an entire spray down on people trying to cross underneath the porch. All right. You got yourself the advantage, but this guy I was mentioning before, he can throw the flashbangs, he can spot somebody, then poke up and get one frag, and then poke up and get another frag, and then poke up again and get another frag, alright? That's just playing from pit. And you got yourself over here, that stuff works, and all this stuff is great. Alright, here's another one, is uh, say if you're playing from pit and you want to watch apartments rather than watching truck side. One thing I enjoy doing is hawking a smoke, like right there. What it does is it forces them to come through blind, all right? They can't see you in any way. You can play any angle you want. I would prefer this angle mainly because you're at least able to, say, catch one guy off, or you can play like right back here and catch him as they straight out completely. It does a lot of damage on that angle itself. Another thing you could do is have a teammate huck a f smoke right above that, all right? What that does is it gives you the advantage to see their feet before they actually come into the site. So you see feet underneath there, they can't see jack crap, it's similar to dust too, the smoke on top of B tunnels. Alright, that's the only thing I can really liken it to. Um, on top of that, you're able to just scare opponents. Uh, another thing you could do is, uh, I actually, in between of these things, is sometimes what I like to do is I just like to huck a smoke down here, and just play kind of like right in front of it. I and mean, you're typically, they might huck a flashbang and bank it just to be a little on the safe side. And But you know what? It's not going to really affect you as much if you can turn around. You can just come right here and you just watch these guys. They try to walk through. You'll see their guns stick out of the smoke before you see their heads. So you just got to be head level. Have a crosshair head level. It's free frag. Such a small choke point. You get barrels of frags, all right? Barrels of impact frags, as our old buddy Struck used to say. Like, crazy little Canadian. Um, he was unique, we'll say that. Uh, next, you've got mine, one of my random pioneered spots, I, and I call it monkey, all right? So it's like up here, you see a sliver. If somebody walk peeks, you can get one too. The only thing is it's really exposed to truck side, so it's, you can only do this positioning if you have a cross aggressive crossfire at middle with your other two uh, teammates, all right, that are playing up close on boiler and one up close on arch and everything, so they can actually spot it. If they make a call that like or one of your homies dies, and you, sh you better book it out of there, and you have the easy advantage to drop right into pit, the most powerful position in the map again. So you have a lot that you can do, as long as you still have your smokes and everything like that. I mean, you could also come right back up there. Alright, one thing is you can come like right up there, sometimes I'll throw a smoke right here, and I fell off for no good reason. What I'll do is I will strafe out as long as I can get over there in time, and you'll see a head strafe right across. See that? You can slightly see just that area. Alright, so you can come like here. And here's the thing, it's like if you see them, you strafe just to the right, free frag. Right, frag, 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 all frags, all frags all day, all right, sweet stuff, it's just a random spot, haven't seen anybody actually utilize it properly, that's the only problem, is because typically teams, they like to play a, uh, a fallback setup where you collapse into the site and straight into crossfires, which is very strong, so I highly recommend doing that. It's just, you don't get to have your little fun being creative and goof off and stuff like that. But the matter of winning and working as a team is more important, alright? That's one thing I can tell you. So, besides that, I mean, you got your other positionings that you could hold areas. Like, if you, say, like, play graveyard, like, say, right about here, you can just get one shot, one shot, one shot, as long as somebody's up there. And then you have a crossfire and pit where he's kind of, like, manhandling truck side. You can just alternate. You have all these options, all right, from tr uh, from graveyard itself. One thing I like to do about graveyard, if I'm watching apartments from say like a uh, truck side, all right. So check this out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just gonna fire. All right. So you see how that bullet holds right there? We're gonna jump, hit crouch, and let go. See how it's higher now? So if you move, you'll see that it drops. Oh yeah, that's a slight glitch in the source engine. All right. So you see how it's there, and it drops just with a slight tap of the movement. So you could do this while you're up here, hit that crouch, and then you see more of their head, because that's right around head level, all right? That's one way to do it. 
The other one was my favorite. I've actually done this with an M4 too, but my favorite is looking straight into that. See how that's head level right there? That was head level in the other area, but you'll see right around the neck, right around going for throats, as they say on the internet. You can go like right here, where you see a little bit more on the left side than the right side, and I think that's a little bit more important because they're more than likely going to be going a little quicker on the to the to the actual corner of the actual door. So you want to catch them as they're going slower. I mean, you might as well take the easier shot, right? No, it don't make your life harder. So you go for the easier shot, the, the confirmable kill. All right. And so how it looks with an M4, what I like to do is it stands like right here, and you can just you'll see a silhouette, you'll see their body, and you just aim like right underneath the actual awning's wood, and there's like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and that's headshots. Headshots a lot. All right. Very pleased with that kind of spot. I mean, you've got so much options. All right. Like these are all random spots, and so you can get creative. All right. You could also play apartments from this side. Instead of being in the actual site, uh, or on the uh, balcony. And then, um, we'll go a couple more. You can also watch it from inside the site, like right here. Like you play right here. I don't highly recommend this because of the fact that you're exposed to truck side. And if your homeboy in pit, or whoever's watching truck isn't stopping them, you're going to get shot in the side of the head. You ain't going to be pleased. And see, FYI, this wall is spammable. So do it sometimes. I mean, if you if you think you've uh, held them off, where they're not gonna continue entering the site and they're gonna hold back, I mean, then yeah, I mean, feel free, spam. But do not spam an entire magazine. Don't spam clips on clips. All right. You do that, you're gonna find yourself low ammunition on a retake on the other side if they go there. But also the fact is you'll be reloading more often. All right. If you reload. That's, I mean, you can't be more vulnerable than that. So, just take a few shots. Take a few shots. It doesn't take a lot of damage to force people out of their comfort zone, out of position. So, once you start hitting them a few times, they're going to approach either aggressive or they're going to back the hell out. So, keep that in mind when you're playing these spots. Here's one good spot. I know a lot of people like to play, like, right here. This great angle. You can just see as the heads come out. It's really difficult to actually nail this shot sometimes because this is like the last position. Like to actually hit this position right here for them to shoot at it, they have to be exposed to ev oh. they have to be exposed to like every other position. Right, so right here, they're completely exposed to the rest of the site: graveyard, pit, balcony, just underneath truck and uh, moto and library and arches. There's so many positions. It's it's. It's what's your favorite position day, and you get free frag right here. It's pretty cool. So that's why the point is, apartment players typically tend to be more of the cautious, systematic. I mean, if they're ridiculously stupid and they just gun it out, I mean, you shouldn't be allowing them to have control of your map. All right, as a CT, that's despicable. Despicable me is what you should call that. Let's see. Um, besides that, we got themselves some counter flashes. I already uh, showed you guys a couple. Uh, from say like pit or anything like that. I mean, you can make them up as you go. There's no right or wrong flash. I mean, it's good to have some decent flashes. So just so you're aware. Some people I know what they like to do. You see how these uh, hay bales are? There's some people like they can just bank a flashbang, and it'll pop over, and then come over here. But that does keep you exposed to apartments. So you got to make sure that's covered, and you know they're not going to come out and just peek at the same exact time. And you got here. Oh, that's not it. So that'll pop like right here at the bottom of the set. All right. So it'll blind pretty much anybody up close on truck, guaranteed. I mean, they can't avoid this. There's nothing they can do, and you're completely safe from that. Those other flashbangs. I mean, you got yourself this one. Oh, not that one. That one. No, my good lord, son of a beasting. Beasting. Let's put beasting. All right, let's go. Uh, we got that, that one, and you got plenty of this one. You could follow that one up. It's kind of more of like a cool flash. I like it. You can throw this one. Just play around the pole itself. It gives you just protection on that end. Uh, let's see what else we got. We've got we got this cool guy right there. Thanks twice. Or banks straight around the corner, pops right here. It's supposed to bank twice. Who knows? Maybe I'm just not cool enough to hit it. You can 
player on the corner. I mean, you got lots of options. You got to utilize this stuff. I mean, if you're not utilizing it, what's the point? Why you why are you play the game? Don't be don't be that guy who only half asses his competitive his competitive team and brings everybody else down with the fact that you're not going to put your uh, your full effort into it, right? So you got those flashbangs. Um, just as a just you have to pour everything in this truck side because I mean. Typically, teams will have two to three coming out truck side just in anticipation of trades. I n don't just let them be trades. As CTs, you need to be able to provide them with enough discomfort trying to come back to that site. You want to make sure they don't ever try to come back to your site. And once it comes to that point, I mean, you got to have a quick rotation, and that's fine. I mean, <laughs> once you steer them clear, you put them on the right path away from your site, then you know what you just did your job right. You can start playing more aggressive, go for the quick flank eventually, but you don't want to be too aggressive because there's typically going to be lurkers. Uh, and the whole thing is, you want to be able to say, my site is closed. All right, They've got to create and adapt to your play style first. That's the point of a defense. All right, They've got to somehow find a way through your defense. All right, It's not the other way around. You don't have to find a way through their offense. Your finding a way through their offense is playing different setups, different angles, different positions. All right, having the different nades, having the different of um, uh, different setups in general. Like, what is it you're going to be playing doubled up someplace, a crossfire, an aggressive setup, a passive setup? You've got so many options. It's not even funny. Like, you got more options than anybody. All right, it's the sickest stuff here on Inferno. That's why it's one of the most overplayed maps on the damn on the damn game. So. What you've got going on, though, like if you really need to like defer to deter and stuff like that, and you can play back here if you're really paying, playing passive, and, and it works. It works. It's strong. You can like get the headshot right there. But typically, teammates, uh, terrorists will come like right up there and peek right above that hay bale, so they'll check you out. So you got to be ready for him. You can get the headshots for coming out to boy, uh, to balcony. It's it's typically two to three frags right there. And if you can actually have a headshot, if you can get your shots down, that is. Um, that's pretty much apartments, all right. Truck side a little different. Truck side, like I showed you, you could use graveyard, you can use site. I mean, that's fine. I mean, you, we've essentially branched off into the truck side player, all right, from the apartment side. So that's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's good. Um, what you can do here is you have multiple ways you can play this. You can play this up close, kind of check up the church bench. You can be that aggressive mother that kind of goes for these shots, but that's very, very common to see. Everybody's looking for that. So you better be very uh, wise in your choices and which rounds you do it against which opponent. Alright, if they got ops there and you just made your team lose a player, yeah, you're going to hear about it. So don't do it. Uh, as truck side, you can play inside the boiler. You can be right here because typically players that are getting into the boiler, they'll they'll walk down the stairs and then they'll come out and everything like that, depending on how silent they were jumping in or if they're making a lot of commotion jumping in the window. You gotta be careful, you can play up on these stairs, like I said, the people with the high ground have the advantage. So you gotta be careful. It's just a little bit more protection. But typically t uh, terrorists will throw nades and flashes in here, so it's generally not safe to be inside of, okay? But what you can do is like you can play aggressive a crossfire like your homeboy at the end of apartments, or he can be in the bedroom and you can be like right here like getting their attention, because what that's going to do is that's going to take the guy who's jumping window, his attention is going to be focused on you now instead. And your buddy, bedroom, can come over here. Like, as soon as they spot you and everything like that, you can play like right here, you can play just right at this angle. You can get that free kill on the guy window who's focusing on boiler, while your homeboy at boiler could be hucking nades and flashes on the other side. Because that guy, I mean, if he's throwing nades and damaging his teammates, their first priority is to be like, window guy, get him, get him, get him. There's nothing we can do. I mean, we're not going to break great. So, I mean, because I mean, that's typical. You know, most teams aren't going to do that. So, I mean, oh, shit. So, I mean, if you're a CT and everything like that, you just huck that nade, huck this flashbang, or you could even, like, you just do a couple of those each. I mean, you'd be fine. All right. Here's another nade you can throw from, um, say, boiler. Huck that guy right out there. See how it pops right there? That does a lot of damage on a rush, right? So it's worth doing. So that's a good nade. It's good solid. If you need to play aggressive, you can also throw a flashbang here for your homeboy who's pushing apartments. 
because what that does is that it blinds anybody who's coming from the alt middle route. He can come here, focus right there on the apartments. Nobody's there. He could push out if you throw a second one. And now he's got a really sick positioning. All right, it's pretty dope. Um, I know some people, what they like to do is they come here and they look for that boost, that peak spot, the map control area where the T is on their T apartments. You just get this headshot, check people crossing the bridge. You could also come over here and peek all middle. It's very dangerous in the higher leagues because people who, uh, people look for this. It's scary when you're doing this. Some people like to open that door and actually sit inside the door frame. So be careful. That's a French maneuver. Learned that from my buddy Jeremy Pro. He was doing that to me a couple times, and I was a little, I was a little impressed by it. I was like, it's creative enough to use because it's a little off. It's uncommon. That's why I'm, I, I'm impressed when people come up with these uncommon spots and they utilize them properly. All right, I and mean, you're able to do a lot of stuff in these areas. I mean, if you need to, if, you, if they're playing like, say, if you've killed the guys all middle and they're like trying to take banana and there's a fake going on middle, you can come over here, get this guy trying to fall off. I mean, there's almost always going to be a person there. But we can come back here where you're crossfiring with your simple arch player. What he's going to be doing is uh, you guys are basically going to be, your job is mainly to watch boiler while his is to monitor middle. All right, you can get this free shot like right here. So typically people, like I said, walk in boiler, frag, frag, frag. Or you can play over here, and what it is is you're a little bit more protected from middle, and you just catch shot right there in the corner. Or you can play around this angle and just catch them off guard. Just You can play any real angle. And you can play underneath here, waiting for them to try and come out so you can get protection from flashbangs, and then you can come out here and get a couple more frags. I mean, do whatever you want. You can pour flashbangs in the middle. You can throw nades in the middle. And here's another thing, all right? Throwing those nades and everything, you can throw nades middle, you can throw smoke middle, really put some pressure on them, force them to come in blind to lay their strat. Whatever you can do to make them uncomfortable, all right? That's one thing. You and the arch player can decide to chain smokes at middle, or you and the arch player can just say, like, oh, they're, they've, they've been taking boiler consistently for, like, every freaking round from us. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know why they keep taking this out. Their shot's on fire. Like, oh my god, oh, I hate my life. Oh, I'm a terrible baby. All right, but the whole thing is this. If you keep getting dominated in boiler, and their they're boiler player is just like eliminating any possibility of you to have fun, just fuck a freaking smoke in there, man. What it does is that scares the living crap out of them. Maybe not that deep. I mean, uh, yeah, n not that deep at all. You want it to have basically landed like right around here. So that way, no matter what he does, I mean, he's blind as a bat. There's nothing he can do. He can't set up flashbangs, smokes in there, and you can still see. Look at that. I was talking about how you can see smokes underneath them sometimes. Yeah, just depending on how the game and the terrain is, uh, it sometimes it doesn't bleed properly, all right? So you could throw nades in here. Like, if you know there's a guy in there, you can just throw a nade. Throw a nade. Well, that's not specific. Throw a nade or a flash. Throw a flashbang and you go for the charge. But typically, you want to be careful because a guy... Well, typically, if he makes noise, he might back up and wait for that flashbang. He just be right here, has the high ground on you. So you gotta be careful. All right. Another thing is, as a truck player, what you could do is you could just jump up here on this uh, porch side. Oh God, wait, whatever. You just jump on the freaking balconies and everything like that. What I like to do is I like to huck a smoke, like right here in front of a. Uh, right here in front of the actual uh, porch in the uh, boiler. What that does is it forces them to run through the smoke and you have pure advantage height-wise. Because people who come in you can get the frag here. Sometimes what I like to do is I'll throw the smoke oops. I'll throw the smoke like right here instead. What it does is it smokes it out for them. Don't get me wrong. A terrorist would love this. All that means is you can have your arch player run away. See, I can see that area right where the smoke was blooming from. But also, you can have your arch player play fallback almost instantly. If he spots anybody, you can be like right here. You can see anybody chasing him over the smoke. All right, it's worth it. Right, just getting these smokes off and everything like that. Just, just screw with their heads, cause I mean, hell, they're probably gonna charge through the smoke as well. So you should be ready as well. As uh, as well as the other guy should be. Mainly because you can get one shot, two shots. Take your time. Don't just spray this stuff. Because you're in such a vulnerable position, similar to how spraying through the apartment wall 
I mean, you don't want to be caught in a vulnerable position reloading. All right, you don't want to be out of bullets if they really decide to like, oh, we pinpointed where he is, you'd be screwed. All right. Mm, truck side, I would have to say there's not much else to it. Um, you could be playing it from a majority of places. Like I said, I showed you pretty much every one of them, though. I mean, that's really effective. That's really health people. So what you want to do besides that is I'll show you the couple of boost spots where you can boost on top of the door. All right. What I like to do is you can run and do it yourself. Oh, I don't know why I didn't jump. All right, you can run and jump like that. You just get a little bit majority of your body off the right side, and then you just jump and instantly crouch at the same, uh, like just after you leave the ground. And so your legs, you you have a higher jumping uh, starting point. You jump higher and then you pull your legs up, not the legs drop and then jumping. I mean completely counterproductive to the purpose of trying to get on this lip. If you get up here, well you can have a teammate boost you if you're not getting consistent with the jump yet. Having a just a deagle right here on an eco. So powerful. So powerful. Having a person playing the site, they're gonna almost always assume your other player is gonna be in the pit. I mean as long as that guy in sight's effing with this guy in the apartments a little bit and truck side, they're gonna be like all eyes on me, Tupac style. Alright? So this is a free frag or two. I mean, it's really solid. You can do it with an M4 as well. If you're feeling creative, it's just scary because what it is is if these guys, you can't do it too often. Because if these guys come right here and you're moving around, they can sometimes see your foot stick out if they're paying attention. All right, if they're hugging really close and looking out and they're pushing straight out. But if they're playing cautious and they're playing against the wall, if they crouch, they'll see you for sure. Like That's a frag for them. Easy. So you got to just be uh, careful how often you use it. And the next one would be up here in this corner. Let's see if I can even do this. No, God, God. Yeah, the other thing is you just basically boost up on this thing. You get up on the hay bale. Whoa, uh, you get up on the hay bale and you just get a teammate to boost you. Not hard at all. It's a common spot. I mean, it can be walled with an op. That thing. So you just got to be careful. But you, you'll be fine. Typical, typically, the reason why that's such a great spot is because this is the plant, and they won't really notice you unless they plant like right here or something like that. You can just play here, play that spot, wait for them to come through. But you got to be ready. I mean, that's a common spot already, so they're going to be checking that. So you better be get your trigger finger ready. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Trigger finger ready again. All right. Um, play anywhere in the sights. You guys could be stacking a sight. I mean, it doesn't really matter. There's so many positions, but I mean, like. You can do whatever you want. I'd recommend against it on a gun round. I mean, it'd be a waste of an M4 or an op, whatever you choose to have up there. God, not an op. If you have an op there, I'm just going to slap you. Because, honestly, that's the most inefficient way you could use an op. Um, next, we're going to move on to our arch player, all right? And how he works with our truck side player. Truck side player, I mean, if, uh, say, our arch player has to quick rotate, your job is to kind of fall off here and play around here what we call moto. It's named after that player, Moto, from 1.6 3D, old school. And this is the area where it, there used to be a Moto pit, is what they called it. It's because he loved playing this thing. He was addicted to it like crack. So that's why people call it Moto. And your job is kind of just kind of periodically kind of just check here, everything like that, make sure there's nobody coming up, and then going right back to covering your homeboy on the truck side, on the pit. All right? It gives you a lot of like, it gives you a lot of responsibility because you got to turn left and right, left and right. You can be exposed to an opera who comes out of apartments or people who rush straight up truck side and they just look at this deep angle from when they run up against the truck. And yeah, it, it's bound to happen. But you know what? That's why you have a good teammate who's communicating to you. All right, that's that's what you got to do. All right, while you're playing here on this, uh, while you're playing here on this uh, truck side to moto, or even if your arch player does this. And you could have a passive setup where your arch player is playing back here. Uh, you could just easily just bank a flashbang and then come out here just as it pops. Uh, and some people huck a flashbang there, some people huck a flashbang here, and just get here and everything. It's free frags. It's perfectly fine. And what it does is that flashbang coming over the wall, they don't necessarily know how close you are. They'll probably start firing blind, so you run a risk of getting blind killed. But it's still a good flashbang, nonetheless, to just push through and kill some people. You can huck it over this guy, and it pops directly over the uh, cubby area. So, I mean, it'll go behind a couple people if they're just straight rushing it. Um, 
Yeah, besides that, you got yourself a library if you have an op. One spot is coming up here, they might get a leg on you, and you get yourself a chest shot. You can play on this side, looking at anybody trying to come into cubby, but I recommend against it. They're going to see your shoulder before you see them, as they're getting the advantage coming out of that angle. It's a frag, then you get a frag into cubby, or you can even have your uh, truck player play like right here, while you have another player right here with an M4, or an AK, or take a pick. So, let's get up here on back to real life. How most people, well, some people will play here, around the arches. I mean, typically you don't want to have them play entirely here. You want them to play up here a little bit more spotting, playing just a recon. Be able to call numbers, be able to call what's happening in the middle. Alright, your teammates on truck side are depending on you, and so are your teammates on banana. So you can be here in this quick rotate position still and helping him out. Arches is typically your opper, mainly because he goes for this pick. Alright, he's going for that pick. He strafes out, he comes over here, he might get the guy on hay bale, or what might happen is he might just fall entirely off and just play back here. Like, I prefer this angle, like right here, because it's an awkward angle, and what it does is it catches the person coming up boiler or the person who crosses my line of sight in middle. Alright, then you could also play like right here. But this is exposed to boiler, so you have to have an aggressive player watching boiler. Like right on over there on that porch side. Here's another angle. Another angle. I mean, this is a common angle as well. Pretty fired a lot of people from there. Um, and if you were to play copy, I mean, you could play like right here, which is just like the last spot that they actually see. Right about here. You can catch one. And then you have the protection of the copy to keep them at bay. Alright? So, I mean, like I said, you can play passive, you can play aggressive, it's fine. Um, another setup would be, uh, say, like, say, having your truck side player, or whoever is the better spawn, come up here with an M4. What a lot of players will do is they'll come, like, right here to have a little bit more protection. What is this? It'll keep them, like, visibly hard to see. Like, right on this side, they can still see apartment push. They can see that they basically cut off an entire area of the map, a very vast majority. But they're very exposed. They can get killed by anything, really. You can play like right here looking into the wall, strafe out, get the guy on car, and then just keep battling it out. You've got a lot of stuff that you can work with. Alright, that's just one thing you could do. And now arches. Like, your job is uh, very difficult because you're a quick rotate. Just like the other guy, the rifle of banana is. Alright? So what it is is you're going to be playing like right here. You're going to end up based on calls, like, oh man, there's four Russian banana, you're gonna get over there pretty damn quick. You're the guy who's the safety net. You're getting over here as quick as possible, you got right here. If they haven't entered the site, they haven't broken through the mouth of banana, you can hunk a flashbang depending on your positioning of your teammates. And yeah, I mean, there's so much stuff you can do. I mean, your job is to do that. But, alright, so here's the thing to keep in mind. You know I was talking about how your truck side rotates off and catches over here to moto? I mean, that's something to keep in mind. And if your player is rotating off the moto, you can no longer play apartment balcony. Like, it's very scary. You can, but it's very risky. It's not worth it. Because you don't have anybody yet. You don't have any eyes on actual middle, and you don't have any eyes on truck side. So your job is to pretty much to fall off here and go into pit. Your job is just... You need to prevent them from getting into the site as long as possible while you're down the man. Right? Typically, you're going to be facing five versus four. I mean, um... 5 versus 2, 5 versus 3, so I mean, when you're down a player to 5 versus 2, I mean, it's kind of scary when you're facing that many opponents. I mean, it's really difficult to hold that shit. So, keep in mind, I mean, when you're moving positions, you're shifting. You're all shifting appropriately, because that way you're not going to be at a serious disadvantage and get caught off guard. Next, we're going to be talking about the rotator of banana, alright? Typically a rifle, because what it is, is most players... We get an op out here, and everything like that. You can get an op out here. Once the op gets out the car, he's typically fine to just play it by himself. It's really hard to like really take it away from him, just because of the fact that this kind of provides a little bit of protection. All right? You can just take, you can get one frag, two frags. Cause people come at banana like one at a time without proper flashbangs, without proper smoking. I mean, it really just doesn't help you at all. So, I do know that you get an op out here, and then typically you can get a rifle to fall off. So you got your rifle who's typically flashing down for him. 
uh, and he can come back here and huck a nade. Um, oh, that is not good. You can come down here and huck a nade. All right. So what that does is that pops like right here. That does quite a bit of damage. Just 47 to 56 on just on average. All right. It's a pretty damn sweet nade. I like it. So it's, it catches the guy who's trying to pick this one common spot. All right. So it pops like right in front of his face. That's good. You can do a nade stack and actually kill a player by doing that. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If you have two rifles or just have a, a bad, terrible spawn, and you want to catch their T spawn that has a good T that has a good spawn, all right. Next, we're going to be talking about a simple. I would say more that we're just assigning the roles. So we're going to go still with the rotator. So he's going to typically be playing around main. All right, this is called main. All right. He can, uh, but at the beginning of the round, what he's going to be doing, he's going to be playing sight. Because what your, your opera is going to do, I mean, if he's up in this corner or something like that, or he's at car, he's going to need a counter flash. So you should still have a counter flash. And he's going to want to fall off straight over to here, so he gets the next best angle. Bam. And he can fall off to here. Or he can go all the way around like a panzer monkey. I mean, I'm one of them. He can come over here and pick from spindle. All right. But a better angle that he could do is back here. You hug this door, crutch right here. You actually get the guy as he stops and he looks for the actual headshot on spindle. You get a free shot. But if anybody's actually strafing in or running in on a rifle up close, that's where their head's going to look like, right there. So you can just barely move your, your crosshair. You catch one to two of them. Easy. You can actually get a double, potentially, right here. It'd be dope. Looks so sweet in a clip of the week. Um... You've got lots of potential, alright? Your rotation is based on the fact that after he's set up, he tells you, alright? You are the wingman in this situation. Your opera is your maverick. You gotta be Goose. You gotta be Iceman, alright? You gotta be the wingman. So, not, none of this garbage where you're gonna be like, oh, okay, you're cool, you're cool, like, um, let's say, stay here. I mean, you can play it based on how your opponents are, alright? You wanna be reading them constantly through the scrims, through the match, through the, the clan war, if you call it in Europe, so, or the mix. So, the story is, you want to be listening to him, and you guys want to be making sound judgment off of what their behavior is. All right, you want to have behavior, like, always calculated, because one is, this rotation is loud, all right, so you can hear how many people are coming here from Banana, but if you're right here, you want to have, uh, say, if you're rotated all the way from, uh, if you rotate all the way from Banana, you're going to be playing doubled up with the guy, say, Cubby, or you're going to be playing the Cubby, and he's going to be playing op back here. I mean, it's perfectly fine. Or op back there, and you can be playing right here. Your job is mainly to be that bait. All right, you're going to bait, and you're going to bait him into the free shots, the free frags for your homie who was supposed to be playing there in the first place. All right. You're mainly here because this site is easily smoked and assaulted. There's multiple areas for them to spread out and expand to, not a singular choke point. Just like truck site is a singular choke point, there's multiple singular choke points around this area of the map on this bomb site. You've got apartments, you've got truck, you've got arches, you've got the actual arches spawn, you've got arches the library, you've got arches the freaking site, wrapping the site. I mean, you've got so many options, you've got so many, you got so many checkpoints. All right. Go back to the other site. Here's a smoke that I know you could throw from this side. You come right here. You throw. You take your uh, on a four by three. Keep in mind, there's only four by three. I put my freaking one right in the uh, put the curve of it on the cup of that black dot. Right, you see that black dot that I was just pointing at? Right there. This black dot. So I come here. I look at. I look right down the barrel of the gun, alright? I'm a damn, a damn death wish, man. So we put it right here, you run, and you release just as the chimney is going to disappear on your screen. That might have been a little off timing wise. Nope, it was perfect. And what it does is it smokes the end of the banana. So now they have no idea how far you are, banana. You could throw a flashbang, and then they're clueless. They're going to have to counter flash, or they're going to rush through blind, or they're going to simply wait it out. And waiting it out is the safest thing to do for them. All right, Waiting it out is smart. And if they wait it out one time, do it again. Play super aggressive. Freaking push it in their butts. I mean, do whatever you can. 
Alright, that smoke is one good one. There's another one back here. I'm not entirely sure. Nobody actually showed it to me because I'm not cool enough. It has something to do with like right here and it ends up landing like right on the edge of this roof. I have no idea. I have no idea where my smoke just went. Alright, there you go. I'm not sure. I'll learn it someday. I'll show you. What else we've got here is you've got yourself a pop flash from on top of the spindle that you could be throwing while your teammate's going to say push out aggressive with a colt. You hu you aim like right at the end of this uh, antenna. You huck it right there, or a little higher. There you go. Just aim it like right there. What it does is it pops right above this car, like right above the car, and it blinds the living piss out of everybody. Even in this little god spot, he's going to be blind too. All right. So he's got everybody's going to be blind, no matter what. It's a sweet pop flash. Everybody should learn that. Everybody should be working as a team to do that flash. Alright? Say, here's another smoke you can be doing. I just like to aim, like, right here, the randomly at the wall. Alright? So you can actually see feet. It's a free frag right there. See feet. Bam. If you smoke that, though, they're going to pre-fire that angle. So you better be careful. You can get a little further wider or something like that. And just mess with them. That's cool. It's it just works to your advantage using the terrain, using your surroundings. One thing I will also say is uh, smoking out, you can smoke out the car. That scares opponents because they have to like think, oh my god, where are they, where are they, where are they? They're scared if you throw it, that is. Uh, one I like to throw is like right there, right next to the wagon. Because that forces them to go through this small area right here. Jump on top of the wagon itself. You can be crouching. You'll see a head jump across. You get a free frag, and you get more frags right here. It just works. I mean, it's good. Then you've got yourself um, this positioning, which is fine. All right, you got this positioning. You could be playing with a counter flash setup, where you could be hucking a flash off this wall. See how it banks twice. Thanks to right here. What that does is that allows you, allows your teammate to come over here, and he does not do you afraid. It'll pop right underneath him, but he won't be affected. So you get your angle down. Well, I was too far forward, obviously, but you 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 get what I'm saying. It'll blind anybody coming into the actual site into the trough to Jenny. All right, that's good. Um, I would say we already went over those angles. We already went over the rotations. All right. Next thing you which you can do is I'm going to show you guys different spots with counter flashes. One of my favorite spots, I mean, obviously one of the most common spots, is uh, yeah, you can throw this flashback and it'll pop right over the edge. It's cool, works perfectly fine. That'll pop a little further over, and it's good. The, mo the further up, I, the the like the higher chance that it, they're looking at that area that you're actually popping the better. Alright, that's good. The only difference is, if you have a teammate main, that's going to blind them too. So, be aware of that. Um, my favorites happen to be off of this. See, cause what it does is it, it, it actually acts as a pop flash. It will bank off this twice, and it lands, it lands a little further out. It lands like right here. You just aim a little higher. See that? And that'll blind the living piss out of anyone trying to come to the site, or anybody in Jenny, or anybody in Maine. It's typically a good combination to use that flashbang with somebody in the back of site, somebody at spindles, or anything like that. Because it just works so good. Because typically teams, what they'll do is they'll end up smoking up Maine anyway. I mean, they'll smoke the crap out of that. Well, a little bit better than that. And they'll just smoke this up, and then they're going to assault this site that you're at, alright? And so they're going to come at you. So this flashbang, you could throw one, you could throw two, I mean, take your pick. But it, it works damn well. It's pretty much a pop flash. They don't see it coming. You can huck one off of that. Those work too. I mean, those just perfectly fine. Another one you could throw is like up here. Because the higher it goes, like you can huck it like there, and it just banks back and forth, backboards twice. Blinds anybody coming in the trough. You could also just huck a one off this garbage can. Well, that's, that works as well. 
That one takes a little longer, and they can see it a lot longer, too. That's why I don't really recommend it. Um, I mean, like I said, you could throw this one. Uh, oh, there's another one. Uh, you could sit, like, right here. I know some people like to come, like, right around. Where is that spot? Uh, I think it's, like, right here. Where is it? There's a position where you can actually see through these things slightly. And some people can just come, like, right here. And that, that blinds the piss out of people, too. Um, one of my favorites has to be right back here. I was showing you guys this in CFGO. And it pops over the top, and it blinds anybody trying to come over here to these new boxes. Alright, it's, it's a pretty sweet freaking flashbang. I like that one. Me and uh, Nubler actually found that one. I, we were both, like, super giddy as school kids. I mean, you've got this angle, like, right here you can be playing from. Still, all this area is exposed to the boost on luck, so never forget, alright? Um, you've got the same thing with, like, right here. That pops over there. You can throw the flashbang off this. That blinds people. I mean, you've got so many options. I mean, I'm pretty positive if I wanted to, there's probably a flashbang off that crate. Like, you can probably throw a flashbang off that crate into the trough. Yeah, who knows. Either way, there's a bunch of stuff you could be creative about this, guys. You don't have to play just generic. Fuck that flashbang. You got this advantage. I mean, there's a lot of... St that was a smoke, huh? One flashbang I like to throw is, uh, actually, it goes off the end of that crate. <laughs> The reason why is because it banks off this guy. It actually comes with a perfect angle off this. One, two, and then it pops midair. So anybody strafing into the site is going to get a face full of that. Even from right here. They have to be hugging this to possibly avoid it. Right? And I know the great, uh, the great one that a lot of people love to throw is right off that. And it banks right into the trough itself. So it works just as well. It's a little bit more noticeable because it's higher up. It's in people's like like area of peripheral that they'll notice and react to. It works pretty damn well. Um, I would say there's not really many more counter flashes. I know one that people love to do. Say like if they're playing solo with a rifle here, they'll huck a flashbang over here. They're playing recon. They'll huck a flashbang right there. They'll huck a flashbang. Oh, that that one. You could be playing sandbags, so you might hear something, like you might hear two, three, just be like, oh, cool. Or you want to bank it off that. And that'll pop right into the trough. It'll pop like right here. Bam. Right out that window. It's pretty dope. It's dopamine, alright? Um, next, uh, you've got yourself some serious random spots. Like, I've seen some people come up here, just be like, oh, yeah. Right there. One, it's so uncommon, it's so ridiculously exposed, it's so unlikely to happen. Uh, one, another one you could do is uh, a spot that I like to do on Ecos, but you can do it with an op too or a rifle. One I love to do is a come right. Oh, god dang it! I'm not gonna boot jump all around again. As you come like right here, you stand up as soon as you get to stand. Um. Yeah, there we go. You strafe over here. Alright, I have gotten plenty of one dates right here. People just strafing across. One, two, three. It's so hard to notice you. It's very hard to flash you. Alright? You can't get noticed really from any area. You don't really get spotted from the boost area back there because you're pretty protected. You could even jump to this area from up there. I mess it up, but you can. I mean, it's just a great spot. You could hand up here with an op as well. I mean, just the same angles. I guess you could fall off really quick at the same time. It's just a solid CT defense. Alright, like I showed you the pop flash there. I mean, there's also a number of ways you could do this. You could have a teammate huck a flashbang off this. Like as you're playing aggressive. Instead of that other pop flash that's standing on the spindle. There's so much you could do. Some players I know like to take a smoke and they huck it down here. Just so they can come over here and just start spraying down with the uh, enforce. They get... I've seen so many French people get frags like that. It's ridiculous. It shouldn't happen. It's illegal in my state, in the states, but it happens. So, uh, you got yourself your counter flash setups. Guy who's right here, hucking that. That'll pop way out there. It's really solid because people can. It's really. 
it takes people a second to actually register where that flashbang came from because it pops almost instantly at the time to see it. And you got yourself the flashbang there, like right over the car, but that one's a little easier noted. Uh, you got a flashbang right here. Because you can spawn right through here, you can see people. Alright, you can't shoot through it, but you can see people. Alright, you can see high up. Actually. Eh, no bullet holes. Okay, good. I thought it was just seeing things. Uh, anyways, back to the sandbags. It's an aggressive position. Everybody checks it. But you might get a couple people here and there, just if you have a, an op playing bait for you. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a lot of funky stuff that you can work together and work into your routine, and I'm not going to go any further into detail on that. Um, I would have to say, I'm going to split it up and do CT side and T side differently. Like, so that way I'm going to do, just cut this off at CT side and then do T side another time. Because honestly, this has probably been way too long in the first place. I'll set up another T side for you guys later. Uh, but I would say, if you're going to be playing this game, uh, you could be really stupid and play inside the fountain. You could be playing up here. I know a lot of people that come, like, right here and just surprise the crap out of people. Right here at this angle. It's so random. But you can catch people off guard. Alright? Um, that's... Everything I have to say about that. You guys have a great night. I'm gonna alt-tab and I'm gonna close this window. Alright, peace out.